good of you to make it. So this is my house. Uh, I bought it 14 years ago with a girl we were planning to have children. Uh, she left within a week. In terms of the decor, you would obviously need a, a grand mastermind to come up with something as, as, as well thought out as this. It's, it's not me, it's my wife's thing. She got pregnant, she decided to give up her job for a bit and, and uh, do up the house. Really, it's the kids, everything, all the good stuff has been turned over to them. They've even done some of the paintwork. If you were going to steal anything from my house, these two paintings, they're by a Canadian artist called Peter Hoffer. She's in love with them, I don't really like them. The insurance money would be worth a lot more to me. One of the really annoying things is the assumption that people make that because I'm a restaurant critic I must be a frustrated chef. And that's, that's not true. I am far too educated to be a chef. I was always going to be a restaurant critic. I was always going to be one of the greats. This is the British Press Awards 2005 Food and Drink Writer of the Year. The sad thing is there's really only about eight restaurant critics uh, and it's ten years since I won that. If I could go back in time and experience one great meal I've had again, it would be the one I had with my dad. I took him to a really experimental Sichuan restaurant and he didn't really like it. And I now think a week before he died, which we knew he was going to do, was that really the time to try and make my dad experience new things? Let's go upstairs. This is my study. My job is to, is to say what I really thought. I can't pretend a restaurant is better than it was because you might go there because I said so. Twitter is a different matter. I've done some terrible, terrible, terrible things and I've ended a lot of friendships and basically my neighbours don't speak to me. Well, obviously this is one of my many bookshelves. I have a lot of books because I'm, I'm a very well-read chap. I sometimes wonder whether my home is a quiet or a social place. I think probably neither. Sammy, what are you, Sammy, what are you doing? I'm frozen as well. I guess I'm a bit of a voyeur, although probably no more than the, the next person. I can't help when, when it comes winter and the lights go on in people's houses and you walk past and you think, oh, I wish my life was like that. Overnight, our house went from sheets and blankets to duvets. Uh, and that was because this habit had opened up down the road. I've always loved and been surrounded by habitat cushions. And as you can see, Sam is equally discerning. The habitat thing that I love most, without question, and couldn't do without, is this chair. Because I have a massive lunch most days as part of my job, and I couldn't get through the afternoon without a little nap. <laughs>